Hello, it's Uncle Jim. Uh, last night I decided to try CLR for my suppressor baffles on my little 22 pistol can and pretty good results. So we'll talk about that. So I've always refused to use the dip. I never use the dip, the so-called suppressor cleaning dip solution which is vinegar and hydrogen peroxide. All the hydrogen peroxide does is just make it bubble and help it out, but it's the vinegar that's dangerous with lead. So it's highly toxic and I refuse to use it. You have to dispose of it at a uh, toxic waste facility. Uh, never put it down your drain, never put it in the ground, all that stuff. It's just not worth it. You can add salt to it to try and suspend it, but it is nasty. Any chemist will tell you that. So this can's like 12 or so years old, and I've never used the dip. And they don't have to be perfectly clean. Um, so I'll do a quick Sonic clean. That gets most of the bulk off. But after a while, you get a lot of buildup on lead. And... Um, so I'll wet tumble with pins, just like you do your brass. I even have a little tumbler just for that. Uh, and that gets most of it off, but there's some crevices and things, uh, it, you know, never got. So I thought it'd be time to try CLR. And wet tumbling, uh, never did the end caps because this is... I don't think this is heat treated stainless like this is. And so I threw it all in there except for the tube. And it kind of messed up my end caps a little bit. So anyway, don't get vinegar anywhere near lead. You might see articles, old articles, where you're cleaning brass or whatever with vinegar. Don't do it. They didn't know any better. Um, highly toxic. So anyway, I tried CLR. Uh, a lot of people are using CLR even in barrels, but then they find out it could screw up your barrel if you leave it in too long. Don't neutralize it. Um, but I've seen uh, some decent results, so I thought I'd give it a try on this old 22 can, and it turned out pretty darn good, and it was very easy. However, it's also an acid, supposedly not as toxic as the dip, but your leftover solution, you got to handle that with care, dispose of it properly. So I used uh, like a quarter cup, just enough to cover these, and uh, used it straight and put it in there and let it sit. And some people do six, eight hours, whatever. I, I think I was at four hours. And the reason I did this was it was getting so bad. I uh, couldn't even see. I couldn't even see these little cutouts. And these are all filled with lead. I'm sure there's a few left. And all that is important. For the sound and then what I always did was I kept the dirtiest ones on the first part of the baffles always kept it that way but you'll see how clean this is all right there's a little lead there let's do a close-up that was caked that was almost flush so the tumbling, uh, you know, I'm not going to tumble them for four hours or whatever. So, uh, I thought it was time. Now, it worked awesome. Even the, the really dirty ones. Guess I'm going to have to go in and out. I'm trying to get, okay. Even the real dirty ones turned out really good. Got the carbon and the lead out of there. And 22 is nasty. So, I was pretty happy with that. So, what I did was I put it in a focus. I put it in a container and let it sit. 
And then I thought, well, let's get the sauna cleaner out. Put a little water in the sauna cleaner and just let the container sit on that and let it agitate. So nothing contaminates the sauna cleaner. And hit a few cycles on that, about nine minutes. And then uh, shook these out with a pair of tweezers, put it in clean water and soap. Did it again in the sauna cleaner and then gave it one more rinse in case there's any nasty residue. And then I put it in the powder coat oven on warm just to dry them off. And while they were still warm, I shot it with silicone spray. You know, stuff you use for your garage doors and stuff. Heavy duty silicone. And what that'll do is help from the debris and lead sticking to the thing. There's actually a product out. It's a brake. Let me see if I can grab that real quick. There's a product out everyone's raving about that you put on your baffles. Let's see if I can show you that right there. All right. I'm going to try that because people swear by this. You put this on your baffles and nothing sticks to it. Then you could just throw it in a sonic cleaner. So that is a, a brake system grease that's 100% silicone. Now, what we used to do years ago is use DOT3 or DOT4 brake fluid because that has a high silicone in it. And uh, that would keep stuff sticking to this so it's easier to clean next time. But I'm going to try that stuff. So, uh, while they were still warm, I sprayed it with silicone and this is what we got. Now, I've never done a dip or any solution like this. And the CLR, I wasn't sure what my end caps were made of. I knew they were steel, so you don't want to do aluminum. And you can still see the silicone on there. But they turned my end caps a copper color. So this is some kind of alloy. So I kind of messed that up, but I'm not too worried about that. I can always uh, hit that with gun coat. Or just leave it. Now, the reason I did this the whole time was I couldn't see these holes anymore. And this was caked. I mean, a quarter inch of solid lead. Okay, from rapid firing 22s, whatever. And I can see the holes again. Now, I could have left that in longer. Maybe next time I will. Now, another thing. When I got this, and this is a really old can, this is an AAC element, the first element, okay? Uh, when I first got this can, I was dumb and put this in the sonic cleaner, and they took the finish off, whatever their finish was. So I had to gun coat this, and this gun coat is 12 years old. And I never put the tube in the sonic cleaner again. And I'm not using CLR because it would... And this is uh, also stainless so it's not aluminum so in the tube here it can be a bear to get your baffles out modern cans are a lot easier the sparrow came out right after this where it just has two half sleeves and it's easier anyway uh, so for the tube I just use a shotgun brush and G96 and put it on a drill motor and just do that uh, however, this time it was so caked because the side holes blast onto the tube and it just makes everything hard to get out. Uh, so this time it was, it was so caked it had ridges. You can still see some spots. See those spots there? That's where it's blasting out the side holes on these baffles. It was so nasty. Uh, this time I took an old patch and some bronze steel wool and a G96 and just ran it through with the drill motor and that cleaned it up right now. And there's no dust because you're constantly spraying it uh, with the oil. And so everything was pretty clean and sanitary. Now this I treated like toxic waste because I have no idea how much safer it is, it's still going to be nasty. So gloves, 
tweezers. Uh, I just treated it like something very hazardous. Uh, fumes out in the garage, doors open. But it was very quick. So I will be using this method again because I've never seen the baffles as clean before. <laughs> There's a little bit of lead right there. I could probably chip it off, but I think it'll blow off shooting it. And this has a hole in it, so that's the first baffle. Okay, see the hole there? That is pretty darn good. The, the first baffle is the beast. So see how clean these are? That's amazing. These were these little kidney shapes were full. So, um, there's my little report on that. Took the O-rings off the end caps. They're still in pretty good shape after all these years. And they go back right here to seal everything. But yeah, it's kind of a bummer that the finish turned a bronze color. Oops, sorry. But it didn't hurt anything, and it almost got all that off, which I, that, like I said, that was a quarter inch. I mean, there was, that was just solid lead, so I'm sure it's lighter now. And uh, I can do that to uh, most all my cans, so uh, the ones like this are heat-treated stainless inside. Uh, just don't do the tube or end caps. So there's my uh, little report and put this baby back together and back in action. Now, even though, uh, now you don't want to use aluminum, uh, this on aluminum, I'm not even sure about titanium. And I've seen where people have done tests, they put stainless steel in CLR and it discolored it, started eating at it. So uh, I know people have been putting it in their barrels to get rid of some bad carbon, but if you do that, get it out of there. Don't leave it in there long. So, I guess that's my report, but I will report that I have not seen them this good. And I was going to soda blast them and do that. You know, anything to stay away from chemicals. Um, I can't believe I see these kidney shapes again. Haven't seen those forever and again. We're talking about 12 years. Lots of 22s have been <laughs> put through this can. And so uh, for you guys out there that have heat-treated stainless baffles, you can do that. Just don't do your tube. And if you do your end caps, you got to know what it is and be prepared to ch -ch -ch, which I do. And I'll make it look like this again. Okay. And this sucker, like I said has been, this coating has been on here for, where's, where's my focus? How come I can't focus here? There. See, you can still see the lettering and everything, and I just airbrushed it with the gun coat, and it's still held up all these years. You know, there's a few spots. So, I can do that to the end caps, no big deal, but I would just do the baffles. And if you see this color, you know they're heat treated stainless. Okay. So. Oh, this one. Wait a minute. Yeah, this one has a hole in it. Okay. That's my first baffle. So, uh, cans have come a long way. They're modular now. A lot of them are easier to clean. This one's a bear to get apart because once it gets all fouled up, uh, it gets stuck in the tube, and you, you actually uh, use a little tool to push them out. And they lock together. And in this case, what makes this can, and as old as this is, there's still no quieter cans out there for a pistol. A small can like this, uh, it, you're never going to notice the difference. I mean, it's it was top dog back then, and it's still a good dog. So on these, you have... these little side holes, uh, these clip together and then you, you got these little clips here like that. And then you stagger them so 
one hole up, one hole down, and so on. You stagger them opposites. Pretty easy still. So, anyway, if you use CLR, be very careful. Treat everything like it's toxic. You know, gloves, waste. Luckily, I just have a little tiny container of waste. And do not pour anything down the drain or get it in your water table. And I hope this helps somebody. So, until next time, thanks for watching.